Hi guys, this is MXUX. This is on the earnings call. Hi, this is MXUX. So I'm just going to go over real quickly this slide deck and make some comments while I'm doing it. I've marked the slide deck up a little bit. And uh, I think that uh, there's some things worth noting here. Uh, this is the non-GAA. They, they went outside generally accepted accounting principles to uh, give a better picture of the financials. And that's because of all these changes and so forth. It's clearly noted here. You can read this uh, on, the, uh, on the screen here. You can pause this or whatever. So um, there is that. Um, the big news with this uh, earnings report, of course, is the partnership uh, that has been granted uh, to Foxconn. Foxconn's now a 20% about 20% owner of uh, Lordstown Motors. Uh, they have two board seats, which are going to be passive board seats. They're going to go along with whatever the majority of the board rules. Uh, and the board's controlled, of course, by uh, Niavaji and Hightower et al., Angie Strand, and so forth. Um, the cash injection that's coming from this immediately, I believe, is $50 million. And that would leave 120 million or so to come next quarter um, ish after a FICA uh, investigation and grant uh, allowing this in, uh, uh, to take place, this investment. Um, the, on the screen right there, this is uh, a quote noting strong interest from fleet managers in the Endurance. The Endurance is a shoe in to be a success as a fleet truck. There's high fleet demand. Uh, the only thing fleet, uh, fleet owners are waiting for and they are ready to switch brands is availability of a truck. Uh, and I have here that uh, this statement was made. And um, this is regarding the slowdown of this initial production run, which is a limited number of units. And Danny Avaji made a comment that um, certain parts were missing. So uh, Hightower has said that the supply line will be completely worked out by March of next year. And the truck... Uh, should there be and if there is and there should be funding i think of uh for uh production to start in earnest um i have here that the uh, certification is it's complete they're waiting for the um paperwork to come through the range is 200 miles i think there's two things here i have down here they may have a software update to increase the range which would be a nifty idea especially for fleets build one battery size offer an option to upgrade um, the other thing could be with the range on this truck they're waiting for the official certification from the epa so they're kind of sandbagging on that a little bit as they are as they are, are, are sandbagging on the demand from the fleet companies. And um, now here's the North American Truck of the Year. You know, through all this, there hasn't been one bad review on this truck. Um, I can't even find any bad comments. Um, again, here, this mentions the fleet, strong interest from fleets. I think this is very important as far as this presentation goes because... Lordstown Motors is under investigation for uh, speculating on orders. And Steve Burns, as you can see by the sales of, or the orders on the F-150 Lightning, was, in my mind, totally corrected his uh, estimates for sales. And Jim Farley made estimates for sales, and no one called him on it. But anyway, with the SEC investigating that topic at Lordstown, for them to make a statement saying that there is strong interest from fleet uh, owners and uh, buyers and uh, managers, that's a big deal in my opinion. Um, this involves the payouts of the, uh, the tranches for the preferred and regular stock uh, in this partnership deal. The joint venture has been done away with. 
Uh, it has been replaced with a partnership. I believe a partnership implies 50-50, whereas the joint venture was 45-25. All the debts have been done away with with the joint venture, and any expenses from Lordstown made on that behalf are going to be repaid. This stock is going to be purchased uh, in a way to cause the least amount of dilution to stockholders. They have some... Uh, they bought, I believe, all the preferred stock, and there's preferred convertible stock. In any case, what, uh, in my mind, Hightower and Niavaji are protecting the stock price, are protecting the uh, hodlers, and they know that the hodlers are supporting this. We have to remember, um, Hightower basically has one million shares of lordstown motors and he was both the ceo of lordstown and the joint venture now i'm sure while well, they say that uh lordstown motors is going to take over production under the partnership so he's going to be the ceo of the partnership uh this is the this is the financial summary here uh you can read through these there's there's all kind of reductions going on here to the tune of about 30% in R&D and 38% and so on and so forth. Uh, 50 million, I believe, is coming. In any case, we got a, we got 117 million of the 70 million coming in Q1, Q2 of 2023. Uh, so um, there is a cash injection now, uh, which will, you know, sustain the sustain the company. The burn rate was 90. I believe the last burn rate was 150 a quarter. That may drop down after they make these initial five or, or whatever units to sell to qualify for a North American Truck of the Year. So let's go with a 90, 90 mil bur uh, burn rate. That's what it has been. I think it's actually going to drop from that. I think, I think we're good to like Q3 of next year if we just have... Just that standard burn rate with no, uh, you know, no extraordinary expenses or anything. That could vary with the production and so on and so forth. Uh, but needless to say, there certainly is enough uh, financial room for Lordstown to be able to negotiate this partnership with an OEM manufacturer that Niavaji has spoken about in the last two uh, earnings calls. And that involves uh, being the manufacturer of the endurance, for example, for a company like, let's just use Ford as an example. Uh, I know a lot of the executives at Lordstown Motors are ex-Ford executives, and I know there has been some scuttlebutt saying that some Ford people were at Lordstown Day or at the uh, meeting that uh, Foxconn held looking for people to come into the valley. Um, Let's just speculate, and I have no information on this whatsoever other than what I've said. Uh, Ford would be the OEM partner. Lordstown Motors would contract to build the Endurance through Foxconn and through a Lordstown Motors partnership with Foxconn. For Ford, they'd put a different fascia on it, perhaps a different dashboard, and this would carry Ford badging. And for example, it would be sold under the Ford brand as a Ford, for example, perhaps a Ranger, uh, something uh, of that nature, a, a mid-priced uh, consumer model. And this would be uh, uh, in the Endurance under another name distributed by Ford. Now, Ford's having a hard time meeting demand for their products. They are having a hard time making production. This would give them instant input. Now, you can substitute Toyota, Dodge, Subaru, any of these other companies in this equation. It's all the same equation. Immediately having a certified homologated product ready to go, ready to go into production uh, immediately upon signing uh, the partnership with Lordstown Motors. And for Ford, they have so much unmet demand uh, that this could take pressure off of them, for example. Uh, and by the way, in my opinion, Lordstown Motors would stick fleet, uh, strictly to the fleet market 
and sell these weight label, I call them, endurance trucks to the consumer market through an OEM partner. That's how I think things are going to go. And, of course, there would be all kind of revenue generated through this effort. And, again, it would be the endurance. It would be rebranded, let's say, with a Ford Oval. This speculation on my part, sold through Ford dealerships, sold through the Ford website, branded as a Ford item. Uh, I think uh, this is a, uh, here's the thing. Neovagi has talked about this for two calls. To date, if I'm not mistaken, everything they have talked about in these calls has come to fruition. Uh, is past performance is no predictor of future performance. However, that is the baseline that's been laid down uh, by uh, Neovagi. And of course, this the, the, uh, in my mind, uh, I think Neovagi is planning this out. If they had an OEM partner, Along with Foxconn, that would be a balance between the two major players who are in a partnership with Lordstown Motors. I think this would put them in a better negotiating spot with both of the partners, okay, as far as fees and revenues and so forth. And I think this is what ne Neovagi is trying to do. Uh, but anything, I think it's a great strategy. Um, uh, the asset light strategy is working out for Lordstown. I have, uh, you saw the reduced costs earlier. Uh, the year over year loss is down uh, like 38%. So financially, uh, Lordstown Motors is lean and mean. Uh, management is trying to protect the stockholders. Uh, they have operating capital to get them through. Uh, we are awaiting production now. The funds in the uh, partnership with Foxconn, there's $100 million to develop a battery electric vehicle program uh, for the MIH platform. I had mentioned in my pr podcast on this that that could be the Model C, the crossover, which is presently being built in Taiwan by LuxGen and marketed under the N7, I believe, or the X7 badge. This is a two-row, mid-price, mid-size uh, crossover BEV, which is great, full of features and so forth. That is ready to go. Lordstown Motors did receive the IP for that vehicle upon, uh, upon the sale of the plant. Uh, that was one of the conditions of the sale as well. Lordstown Motors received the uh, IP for the Model E, which is a Model S competitor with Tesla, a high-end uh, sedan, uh, really designed uh, to be uh, to have a driver and an executive passenger in the back. There's large TV screens and so forth. You can see my videos, previous videos on this. Um, vehicle. Those are two possibilities. Of course, the Model V pickup truck looks very much like the Endurance. Uh, whether that would be on the MIH platform, I don't know. I don't think so, but it very well could be. Uh, but uh, I would say the Model E or the Model C are the most likely. That uh, Hightower did say in a question in a press conference that they had begun work on two Preliminary work on two uh, MIH programs, and this was at the very start of the association with Foxconn. And those two programs were the Model E and the Model C, according to the IP that was transferred to them. Um, so going, uh, this is this is the uh, year-over-year -year loss. You can see with 38% down, uh, Lordstown Motors, you know, with the capital. Uh, required uh, to meet this production and they are a pre-revenue startup and this is what happens you always need capital uh, Tesla's uh, white knight was Mercedes which ended up selling its stock in Tesla but uh, we're in the same spot with Lordstown Motors but what a spot to be in the vehicles done the vehicles great the vehicle I, I don't even feel a need to talk about the truck anymore because it's so 
so fantastic and so perfect and I think we're going to uh, possibly get a surprise on the range numbers uh, either through the regen power, 30% uh, increased regen power of hub motors or B, uh, the EPA certification will be higher than the 200 already stated uh, with Lordstown Motors sandbagging that figure. Uh, or C, through an over-the-air update. Now, um, that was the beginning of this. I have some cards here. I'm, I'm just going to read through a few, few ideas I have here as far as um, what this deal is about. Um, Foxconn ownership is frozen for two years with this deal, and I do believe that is to, to protect... Uh, uh, against the takeover and to ensure Lordstown has a, 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 a space to grow its stock price. Um, we spoke about the white label. We also have an additional funding is the YA Associates. We have at least one quarter of funding and that is the stock for cash deal there. Um, we also have the possibility of a stock sale if there is a catalyst that catalyst may be being appointed truck of the year um, of course the over OEM uh, partnership is what Neovagi is talking about and just a couple other possible uh, partners you know Ford Toyota Subaru Dodge these all could use a pickup truck uh, BEV pickup truck again um, Foxconn now has a new model, a Model X, which is going to be a three-seater, one-row, three-seat car made for Asia. And this is going to be a low-cost, uh, kind of a plug-and-play car. They're going to be able to choose options over the website and build it to order. Uh, so they've got the ECB VX, okay? Uh, and they have a six-seat and nine-seat vehicle planned for 2024. This is all Foxconn. Now, mind you, Lordstown Motors is going to develop all those models for them, in my opinion. Um, anyway, um, as I said, uh, Foxconn has silent board members. They got about 20% of the stock. Um, there's all kind of limits on their ownership. They've been gated in, in pretty tightly on uh, this joint venture. I think uh, that Lordstown Motors actually got a very favorable deal out of this. And... I um, think that partnership implies a 50-50 split of revenues. Uh, now, um, this new BEV developed uh, for uh, uh, Foxconn, you know, will it generate revenues? It depends on the terms of this partnership, which I haven't found yet, okay? But, so that's, a, that's a, an unknown uh, at this point, a known unknown. Um, I believe that the tooling that Lordstown Motors says it needs, uh, in addition to the funding for the production of the Endurance, I believe this hard tooling involves the stamping dies, and I think they have to limit the production to 500 units because the soft prototype stamping dies can only produce so many units till they start losing their edge. And I do believe this is the tooling that is required that they keep speaking of. Uh, I do believe before uh, COVID, I think the cost associated with the hard tooling was about 90 million. I may be wrong on that, but uh, that was a cost that was just going to be spent before the reconstitution of Lordstown, which was held off to conserve cash for the balance sheet, which Kroll has continued. Um, Foxconn really needs uh, Lordstown Motors to go forward, okay? Uh, the thing is, Foxconn doesn't have... This is their own plant in the biggest market in the country. And 
Foxconn, now everybody's looking at these announcements from Foxconn, and Foxconn is a great company and a very smart company, and I think they were smart to enter into this partnership and put Lord Sign Motors in more control. But you have to understand, Foxconn is a phone and an electronics maker. They do not understand the regulations and the international regulations regarding auto safety and the other things that have to be taken care of when you're producing BEVs for the U.S. or global market. Lordstown Motors is absolutely key to Foxconn's pivot. Uh, they have joint ventures with LuxGen and some other manufacturers. Uh, I am doubtful that any of these manufacturers uh, know or understand uh, in great detail the U.S. auto regulation maze. I think Foxconn is absolutely uh, dependent on Lordstown Motors to produce these uh, vehicles for the U.S. market at their only own plant, which is in the USA, which is the biggest vehicle market in the world. And, and they are dependent on Lordstown Motors to design and get these vehicles into production. And also Lordstown Motors can and will certify these vehicles to be sold all over the world. So you can see uh, Foxconn is doing the, uh, the overall um, function here of entering the BEV market and they have, they will be able to put the supply lines together and they will manufacture most of these parts that go into these vehicles. In my opinion, they'll ma manufacture over 90%. The thing is, um, and they will put together the assembly and they will manage the assembly line and they will get the workers together. They also are going to be doing a great deal with cloud software. And this is a big emphasis of Foxconn. And so the software and, and the entertainment uh, software and the in-car purchases or whatever else may be, this is going to be something that uh, Foxconn is heavily involved with. Lordstown Motors would certainly be involved with uh, this as well, but also with uh, the over-the-air updates for updating drives and battery management systems and so forth. Anyway, um, so Foxconn's closed uh, to buying more stock. They need uh, uh, need uh, Lordstown uh, approval to buy more stock, okay? They're frozen out for two years anyway. Uh, if Foxconn would have to renegotiate with Lordstown Motors to buy more stock or do a takeover. So there's that. Um, I do not believe, uh, I, I'm not a corporate lawyer. I don't know corporate law, but I do not, I do not, I believe under the terms of this partnership, there are so many restrictions on Foxconn stock ownership. I do not believe they can do a takeover, nor do I think for example, Hightower with a million shares of stock wants them to do a takeover until he can get the price of his options up uh, and his stock holdings up uh, because, uh, you know, no one wants to see a takeover at a dollar a share. And that is critical to Hightower, who's holding a million shares. So we, all got, we can all look up to Hightower. <laughs> He's going to uh, uh, be taking care of the hodlers, in my opinion. But anyway, that's an interesting fact. They have to renegotiate with uh, Lordstown. Um, and again, we're looking for a kind of a white knight to come in and balance this partnership with a major corporation, with the partnership with yet another major corporation, this major corporation in the auto industry, uh, and with Foxconn being the pivot point between the two. I think it's an excellent strategy. And uh, we will see. I have no inside information on what's going on. However, Neovagi clearly stated that, you know, we are pursuing it. And I believe he said discussions are underway. There is no firm news. So we'll have to wait until we see that. Anyway, as I said, end of year cash in 2022 on the books at Lordstown is going to be 150 to 165 mil. There's about 100 mil coming uh, Q1, Q2 of next year. 
So $265 million, um, that, that is, I believe, their cash position. Um, something along those lines. Again, I think that should get them through Q1, Q2 of next year into Q3. Um, will that be enough to uh, get production underway? Um, the answer to that would be no. However, we have YA Associates as an available source of capital. We also have a potential stock offering with the right catalyst. And we have a secondary um, OEM partnership we keep mentioning, which could also be another search, uh, source of capital. Also, under this partnership, uh, I have no details on this partnership. Under the old joint venture, Certainly, uh, Lordstown Motors would generate venue, uh, revenue under that, venue, uh, under that uh, contract, the joint venture. Foxconn now has potentially 20 clients. I believe they have five or six presently signed up to make cars at Lordstown. Now, Lordstown is going to manage all BEV development at, at uh, Lordstown Motors at the Lordstown facility. That means they're going to be doing, the inter for example, the Fisker Pair. Uh, that is a conceptual design. They're going to flesh that out. I do believe this and the other projects that are uh, the IDEV is another one that's mentioned. Uh, these engineering efforts by Lordstown, in my opinion, should also generate revenue for Lordstown Motors. How much? When that will appear on the balance sheet? I do not know. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is there are sources of revenue outside of getting an OEM, uh, auto manufacturer as a partner, uh, in addition to Foxconn as a partner. And by the way, I think, you know, I, I did, I did mention it before Foxconn is, uh, uh, the VP of Business Development said they got 20 clients lining up. They're gonna uh, for the factory. In addition to what they have now, that's 25. They're putting in housing. They're gonna put in a, a university extension to train and attract new workers. Um, Foxconn. This is their the jewel in their pivot in the crown of their BEV work is this Lordstown facility. And Lordstown Motors is the key stone to the success of this facility. And they have an excellent uh, working relationship with Lordstown. And they need Lordstown Motors to succeed. And Lordstown Motors needs Foxconn to succeed. And I think it's a very good uh, relationship. And I think, uh, in my opinion, I am very... I am more bullish now than I have been on this security. I think that it is in the best position that it has been in to date. Now, even though lacking the funds, I do not, for production, I do not believe they lack demand and they have a finished product. So it's only a money problem. And, you know, maybe that's a good problem to have because maybe that's the easiest one to solve or at least. Uh, the most solvable one. We're not facing some gigantic technical issue that's going to stall the whole program. This truck is perfect. I mean, believe me, if, if there were any flaws in this truck, they would have eviscerated it with these reviews, with uh, everything that's going on with, you know, the major OEMs advertising and all these publications and everything. They have said not one bad thing about this truck. And the Spanish media, Spanish language media, is raving, raving. I have links, uh, I'll try to put them in the description of this video, of two Spanish language reviews. Uh, and the last one, the guy goes, people want to know, when is this going to be available in Mexico? We want to buy this truck. Uh, so, again, the only problem we have here is a money problem and... It's kind of a big, it's a pretty big money problem, but in my opinion, we've got the best guys ever 
in a position working on this, and that's Dan Avaji, who is a Carl Icahn Capo, Apex Predator, New York Money Guy. You can see the drop in expenses, uh, uh, drop in the loss rate year over year is 40% for Lordstown. They are managing their money, and they have always managed their money smart at Lordstown Motors. Um, but uh, anyway, I just want to go over something here. Now, you know, institutional, uh, the release of institutional buys and sells is always late. But the nearest uh, uh, information I could find is BlackRock owns 5%, 4.89% of Lordstown Motors. And that's an increase, uh, has increased 6%. Uh, Invesco owns 4.4% uh, per uh, of uh, Lordstown Motors, and that is a 26% increase. Uh, PBW, which is a clean energy ETF, owns 3.66% of Lordstown Motors, and that is a 28% increase in ownership. Uh, the portfolio weight of Lordstown Motors among institutional investors has increased 5.46%. And there's the inter, uh, institutional ownership has gone up 1792 And I'll just close this by saying that Steve Burns has sold some stock. There's some hay been made of this. I just want to say, number one, Steve Burns is facing formidable legal costs because of the DOJ and the SEC investigation. So I don't think anyone can fault him uh, for generating cash, and, and I think you have to look at it in that light. Anyway, I think this was a bullish call. I'm going to have to make uh, additional videos on this, I believe, uh, because of the amount of information and the updates uh, coming on it. So uh, this is MXUX. I think we're going to call it a video. Thanks, guys, for listening. Guys, this is MXUX. Please do your own DD and confirm this information to your own satisfaction. I'm not a financial advisor, accountant, engineer, or lawyer, and there's a lot of information here. you got to do your DD. Thanks. Good luck in the market.